Hi, Positive Readers. It's Positive Writer today with another video. Today, I'm going to be telling you about how I saw the Midsommar director's cut. So, I love the movie Midsommar. It came out in July, I'm pretty sure, and I saw it at the end of the beginning of August, I'm pretty sure. And I, oh no, I think it was still July. I forgot, but um, I really, really liked it. I loved it. In fact, I could not stop thinking about it afterwards. I looked up soundtracks, watched the trailer about a thousand more times, listened to the song from the trailer on repeat for several days. I love obsessed with this movie. It's my favorite movies ever now. It's like third on my favorite movie list of all time, and I just really loved it. It was amazing. Um, it's a film about um this couple, Danny and Christian, who have kind of on the outs, kind of, they don't really have the best relationship, it's kind of rocky or whatever, but Christian's friends decide to go on a trip to Sweden for this Midsommar festival, and some stuff happens, and Danny comes along. So it just, please watch it. It's so interesting. If you like anything, if you like Hereditary by Ari Aster, which is the amazing director who, of this and of Hereditary, I love him so much. I can't wait for his next movie. He directed this, so if you like Hereditary, definitely watch Midsommar. Midsommar because it depends on how much you like Hereditary and what you liked it for or whether you like Midsommar or not but I loved Hereditary and then I loved Midsommar any even more so I saw the director's cut which is just a longer like 30 minutes longer version of the movie it came to my area uh, for one weekend only and I got to see it and I'm so happy I got to because I wanted to so badly and I did and now I'm just going to be talking to you guys and my thoughts different things that might have changed from the first version and all that type of stuff just so if you did not get to see it if you missed it you get to just kind of you know understand what the heck was going on with that so first off star rating I give it five stars I liked it more the first the second time than I liked it the first time and it wasn't really because of the extra stuff, it's just because I understood more of the movie because I was watching it for the second time and I got to notice more than I was the first time. So, definitely liked it the second time more. I'm um, not saying the first time was not good, it just like, you know, that extra detail really plays a part. And I'll be talking to that about that extra detail uh, a lot more. Um, and the next thing is detail. I noticed that's what I just said. Um, so, I will be swirling a little bit. Um, so if you have not seen the movie at all, definitely come back and watch this after you've seen the movie. I'm pretty sure it's out of all theaters now, but it comes out in like October on DVD. You can find it somewhere else. Just watch it as soon as you can. It's really amazing and I loved it so much. But anyway, so I am going to be spoiling these movies. So up until now, if you just get to if you just need that persuasion to go watch it and then come back, please, I advise you, go watch it. So uh, the details I noticed that I didn't notice the first time, the paintings in Danny's apartment in the beginning of the film, um, there's one of a bear and a woman in a white dress and that just completely simplifies, um, it kind of reminds me of the end, uh, with the whole bear Christian thing and then her in the white dress and, um, I'm pretty sure there was another one. I don't remember what it was, but I do remember that it was a painting that was a lot like something that happened in the cult thing and Midsummer Festival or whatever and I just, you know. I really like thought that that was a good touch and that obviously unless you've seen it the first time you probably don't recognize it. Um, the bear drawing in the grandmother's house which was the grandmother, one of the grandmothers from the festival had a bear drawing in her house of a bear on fire and I completely was like mm, foreshadowing for like 30, 20 minutes late, left, later in the film because that's when it was shown. It was shown like right before the end almost so we've been new. How we got into the characters' heads. I did not notice the first time. I did because it's obvious, but at the same time, you don't really think about it unless you see it for a second time. At least I didn't. And you can you completely experience what the characters are feeling. Danny is the one who we are in the head of the most, and it's, it shows because there are some moments in the um, movie where it's just like breathing. It's like you hear the you hear her breathing as if you were breathing, kind of in your own you know body or whatever and then you hear whatever's going on around her and then it kind of fades out eventually and cuts back to normal movie dialogue or whatever's going on and I thought that was so cool honestly like it was even cooler than watching it the first time as I've said like thousand times you probably will say a thousand times more it was just so cool to be in the heads of the characters and to be disoriented when they were disoriented um one of my favorite scenes that I'll talk about later on was the maypole dance scene and it's so cool I felt exactly like her in that scene I love that scene so much it's beautiful I love the music and the choreography I just loved it but I completely felt so I'm like overwhelmed while also like whimsical type of feeling like you're just like in a dream because it was so much going on and the way they shot it I think it was perfect and I definitely feel like we were in 
in their point of view at a certain times. So there was one time we were in Kristen's point of view later on in the film. It was kind of like a disoriented type of thing. And then when he got knocked out and stuff like that, it's like the, they opened the eyes as if you were opening your own eyes. It's just super cool. I really think the movie is so interactive and immerses you. And I think that that was amazing. My favorite scene, as I just said, was the Maypole dance scene. And I freaking love that scene so much. I loved it in the first film. I just felt so grabbed in, so just a part of it. It was just amazing. And I love the music and I hate the song that's in that scene. It's not on any soundtracks of the movie. I'm upset. So if you know anybody who has the song or anything, I just wish I had it. But yeah, I love that scene so much. It was just amazing. And it's just a feeling I have while watching that scene. It's just... It's undescribable, really. And then the end is my next favorite. Well, not the end, end. But um, the scene where they all cry together, where Danny was like screaming and crying over Christian, and seeing Christian with all those women and with uh, Maya, and then she was screaming and crying, and then all the girls around her were just screaming and crying too. I freaking love that scene because I love the society of men some more. I mean, that's really twisted and stuff, but I really like it. I just think that concept of an entire community of people feeling the same things and experiencing all the same things together and holding one another up when they're feeling a certain way and just feeling everything together. I think that that is so nice. I don't know. I feel like when you're lacking that, I feel like it looks nicer than it probably is for real. But I just really think that, yeah, they're definitely insane, but I think it's beautiful. And I was, I love that scene because it's just like she always has felt so emotionally like in balance and stuff and she always feels like she's leaning on Christian too much and he's not leaning at all but these all these people now are leaning with her and it was beautiful it was just beautiful um and then the end is another favorite part of mine because I just love the end it's just so um I don't know it's just like there aren't really any words spoken after the little ceremony when they pick somebody to sacrifice and I don't even tell you who they sacrifice but it's obvious from the, the look that Danny gives Christian that she's going to sacrifice him because they just both know you know it's just like an inner knowing to both of them and you see them make eye contact with each other and you just know he's dead but then like after that and they're all the whole town is just like convulsing and they're all like moving in different ways and stuff they're like feeling the loss of the people inside of the tent and you know uh they said something about letting the the temple go on up in flames because and because they need to cleanse themselves of their wickedness or something like that i feel like they're experiencing that too like because they always experience everything together and the whole time danny's just like coughing and like wheezing because there's freaking smoke and stuff around and then she's like crying and crying like she's been the whole movie and then she just realizes that she's completely and utterly free no baggage whatsoever and she has completely found the family after losing the one she had and the one that she tried to gain and then she's just smiling and it's just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was it's just cinematic masterpiece, that movie. I swear to God, I love it. Some of the shots are just beautiful. The symmetrical uh, scenes and stuff of the people, how they sit, how they like dance. I just, I'm in love with this movie. <laughs> the next um, thing on this list is soundtrack. Um, and my favorite song on the soundtrack um, that other than the maple dancing one is uh, Fire Temple, which I'm pretty sure they played at the end, um, if I remember correctly, if my ears can remember correctly, because it's such a hopeful song. It goes completely along with the scene and how her facial expression changes from complete and utter sadness and kind of just like disorientation to happiness and just joy and contentment, knowing that she has really found her home. And then the next one was the one they played on the credit song, The Sun Ain't Gonna Shine Anymore by Frank Valli. And I'm so mad that it isn't on Spotify because I was going to add like five playlists, but it's fine. I love this song. I loved hearing it on the movie because I've never heard it before, but I think it was perfect for it. It was just like such an upbeat song compared to like the whole mood of the movie being so dark and twisted and stuff. But the whole movie is like a bright horror movie, like a horror movie at the time which is completely unheard of and not done really a lot at all. So I just think it was a perfect fit. And uh, a quote from the director that basically sums up um, how much I love this, uh, the end of the movie and just the movie as a whole. It, uh, he was talking about Danny at the end of the film and said that she has surrendered to a joy known only by the insane. She has lost herself completely and she is finally free. 
it is horrible and it is beautiful and I freaking love that quote because it completely sums up exactly how I feel watching it and I just love this movie I am in love with this movie I'm glad I didn't even feel like getting another take I'm not gonna be honest like I just got home from school first day of school I was like I don't feel like doing anything but I got up and I recorded this I'm so glad I did because y'all need to hear my thoughts and I needed to voice them I hope you go watch this movie if you've stayed this far and still are like I don't know if I'm gonna see it or not because I know everything but you don't know everything a lot of stuff in the movie I didn't even touch on so Go watch the movie if you have not seen it yet. Um, hopefully the director's cut will come out on DVD sometime too. Because the director's cut is kind of just like an extra little something. And it's just longer. You get to sit and be in the minds and the mood of the film. Which I loved and really enjoyed. Scenes didn't change that much as far as the deleted scenes that weren't in the actual final cut of the movie. It was just stuff that really did not help the story at all. Or kind of just were like random. Um, but I really did enjoy this movie as I just said. I've seen it twice now and I plan to see it a lot more times in the future. Um, I just... It really makes me excited to just be a up and coming filmmaker and just to explore everything that has to do with film and acting and all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video and me raving about this movie. I'll be go watch it as I've said like a thousand times. Listen to me please. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you later with another video.